What's up everybody, Matt Moran here for another car review. This is of course the 2019 Acura RDX A-Spec. Huge thanks to Acura for providing me with this all new RDX to review for you guys today. So about the new RDX, well, it is really sharp looking to me, especially here in the sportier A-Spec trim. It is really awesome. Uh, it's on an all new platform that's Acura exclusive here for the new RDX and looks fantastic. Up front there, yeah, some of the unique sporty things of the A-Spec version are these darker jewel eye LED headlamps, which look really good. I also love that grill. It's so cool. Now the Acura emblem is very large, but I just love um, the like little star constellation thing you have there with the grill and it just looks like you're flying through space or something and then coming down to the lower part of the front bumper here you'll see some LED fog lamps as well as again a more aggressive look than again what you get on a normal RDX. You also have this hood that has these creases to it that gives it a little bit more aggression as well. Coming down to the side you have these darker 20 inch wheels here and they're on wider 255 wide tires here. That's another exclusive A-spec thing um, and a really nice look that complements the darker elements of the rest of the vehicle as well. You have a nice A-spec badge here on the fender. Going down to the sides there, I love the body line that it starts all the way up here in the fenders and goes all the way back to the taillights there and kind of sweeps up. I think it's a really cool look. I also really love the C-pillar treatment they have there, which is uh, kind of giving it a little bit of a floating appearance and uh, just makes it a little more visually interesting. Going out back, you also have some darker tail lamps here on the A-spec version, but I just like the shape of the tail lamps as well. I think they look really sharp. Um, I also like on the A-spec, some other unique things here are the rear diffuser uh, down there. It's not a real diffuser, but it kind of looks like one is very cool. You also have some larger exhaust tips here for the A-spec version too. Uh, and otherwise, just a very nice, attractive uh, back end here on the RDX. And so overall, from every angle, I think this new RDX is definitely a little bit bigger, a little longer, a little leaner and uh, more aggressive and I think it's a fantastic new look. Right, so the interior of the new RDX. Well, I am really loving this new Acura interior. It is really impressive in a lot of different ways. So anyway, first thing, sitting down in these seats, you have these sport-specific seats here for the A-spec version of the RDX here. And they're pretty cool seats. I really like them. I love the perforated leather. They're heated and ventilated here. And uh, they're just, uh, you know, pretty cool with the Alcantara inserts here to help them be a little bit grippier so they hold you in place very well. Bolstering is pretty good as well. Although, I believe there's a 16-way seat, but it's only available, I believe, in the top advanced trim. Um, because these seats, you know, they have the standard adjustability, um, but they don't have any kind of advanced adjustability, unfortunately. But they are still pretty comfortable seats. They are a tad bit on the firm side, uh, but not uncomfortably so. Just, uh, you know, an interesting thing to note there. But overall, they're pretty good seats. Next to the steering wheel here in the RDX, which is really great. Again, A-spec specific, so you have the perforated leather. And uh, it's a really nice, beefy wheel, but it has just a fantastic 9 and through grip. You can really get a nice grip on this wheel. Uh, nice little 10 and 2 notches. I love the contrast stitching you have, the uh, A-spec badging here on it. Um, some of the metal trim you have around it as well is very nice. Uh, it has these nice paddle shifters as well that are chrome plated and uh, feel pretty good. A little bit larger than what you're usually getting in SUVs these days. Um, and then just a decent amount of buttons here on the front of the wheel, but nothing too confusing. Next to the gauges here, which are A-spec specific. So that's how you get these silver faces with the red illumination. Um, and it's very cool. It's an obvious throwback, I think, to the RSX Type S and other models like that in the past. And I think that even though, you know, it's a throwback, it's very uh, modern looking still. I think they look great, especially since you have that nice large digital display in the middle. And so anyway, that center display there will just give you a good amount of information here. The main thing I love about it, though, is um, in addition to the, the basic, uh, you know, trip information and all the usual stuff, you do have a sport display setting, and that will give you a non-numerical boost gauge there which kind of just uh, increases in its size and shape as you get into the gas pedal there it's kind of a weird setup but it is cool to kind of see some reflection of what the turbo is doing and then on the right hand side there are a little mini G meter but again non numerical would be nice to have a larger blown up version of those but unfortunately you can't get any kind of larger version of those but nice to have them nonetheless and I like that you can kind of have them there in the background you can also go in there's um, like the application so to control the infotainment you can actually do that through this center screen if you don't want to look 
knock away at the larger screen or mess with this new touchpad. You can use these scroll wheels and kind of uh, get into some of your basic uh, favorite, you know, save presets and stuff right there in the gauge cluster as well, which is really nice. Um, and I also love whenever you turn the car on, it has this very cool turn on animation um, and sounds that come on. And then whenever you turn it off, it also has this cool little animation of the car and just nice little touches that just kind of make it fun to get in and out of the car, even just small little things like that. And I really appreciate it. There is also a very cool, large, very advanced heads up display, but that is only available also in the advanced trim. You can't get it here in the A spec, unfortunately. But anyway, coming over to the side of the dashboard here, this is all brand new as well. And I really like the way they set this up. First off, right up top, you have this 10.2 inch widescreen display that's controlled by this true touch interface is what Acura is calling it. And so first off, let's start with the screen. It's very nice, high resolution. I love the menus, the way everything's set up. The only thing I will say though, is that it takes a little long to boot up sometimes, not all the time, but sometimes I'll hop in the car, turn it on and you know, I'll be like putting it in reverse and the screen still won't be booted up. It will automatically go into the view for the camera. But if you just want to, you know, turn on the radio as soon as you hop in the car, sometimes I'm waiting a few seconds. So I wish it was a little faster. Uh, also going through some of the menus, sometimes it takes it a second or two to load icons and things like that. So I uh, could use a little bit of a speed boost, but I really love uh, the concept of it here. And I like the way that it's set up and it most of the time works very, very well. It has Apple CarPlay. Unfortunately, no Android Auto yet. They say they're working on bringing that. I think it's just a software thing and enabling it or, you know, coming to an agreement with Google or whatever it is. But so no uh, Android Auto yet, but that should be coming very soon. They're saying in the meantime, Apple CarPlay at least, which is nice to see that integration there. Um, and the navigation maps and stuff look pretty good. It also has very intelligent voice commands. So instead of having to mechanically input an address with your voice, you can just say, take me to this place and it figures that out and will and will do that for you. So, you know, you don't have to really mess with anything. Although this touchpad does accept handwriting and things like that. If you want to type things in, you can do that. Um, but speaking of this touchpad, so it's different than some other stuff. You, you might be thinking of like the Lexus touchpad, which is kind of similar to just being like a laptop mouse pad. This is different. So this, um, you can do a few like swipe things and things like that and it doesn't really have a cursor though so basically this touchpad is a one-to-one -one mapping of the screen so basically if you just rest your finger on that part of the screen that you would like to touch kind of the way it's mapped out on the pad here um, it'll highlight that very brightly for you and then you push down on it to select it so you kind of just can hover your finger or touch different points like if you want to go to one of the corners for one of the menu items in the corners you just hit these little corner portions and just you go straight to it and it's right there you don't have to you know move a cursor or anything which makes it actually really intuitive once you learn it and get used to it. It can be a little disorienting at first, but I'm going to, you know, see how it grows on me during my time of driving here this week. Also, so on the right-hand side of this touchpad, that controls the right hand of the screen. So it's nice that it's divided out here so that, you know, that you don't have to, again, go from one side to the other, hop around. You always have dedicated controls for whichever side you want to be on, which is very cool. And I also like it's simplified. You know, while some others give you a million options, which is nice, but this kind of nicely simplified. So you have three things for that right hand screen there with the cards and so just navigation, audio, and the clock. And very, you know, simple and straightforward there. And uh, so overall, a really nicely set up screen. Um, another infotainment related thing is the stereo system this has. It has this ELS Studio 3D sound system and it's a 16 speaker surround sound system with 710 watts. And they say true surround sound because there's even speakers up here in the roof. There's four speakers in the ceiling here in addition to all the other speakers you have around the vehicle um, for that grand total of 16 and they said that it was even tuned by a Grammy winning producer music producer um, so all very very impressive stuff and I gotta say uh, in my time of listening to it so far it does sound very impressive I mean uh, just about as good as all the best systems that I've experienced so far not maybe quite as powerful as some of those but so crisp and sharp anyway though moving on you have a volume and tune uh, buttons here which which is nice to have those. Uh, then you'll have this dynamic mode selector, which is your drive mode selector. Um, it's interesting that it's so big and so dominating on the whole center area here, but it's still cool nonetheless. And you also have a button to turn off the auto stop start, which is very much appreciated as well. And I also have to say, while we're in this area, everything is just so much nicer than Acura's of old, where, I mean, you have this real stitching with nice padded surfaces here. All the plastic, even the higher up stuff here that used to be harder in previous Acura's is now a much softer material and just feels a lot more luxurious honestly and everything in here just feels
feels much nicer. All the materials are authentic. So if you see wood, it's real wood. Uh, this one obviously doesn't have any kind of wood, but you have the Alcantara instead. Um, but even all the metal that you see is real metal and it's really impressive, all cool to the touch and all that kind of stuff. Um, and like you'll see that, for example, on this lid that covers the cup holders, which is a uh, very nice. Other things though, moving on to storage spaces here in the RDX. First off, in the doors, you have a nice large pocket with a bottle holder. Coming over to the center, you have this massive cubby underneath the transmission tunnel area here. Uh, and it is just, I mean, tons and tons of stuff in there. You'll also find a power outlet, an auxiliary jack, and a charging USB jack. Um, and then, like I said, you put this cover back and then you will see another little slot here. That's where you'll have the USB port for plugging in your phone. If you want to do Apple CarPlay or any kind of USB audio, that's what you're going to use for that. That's the only data one in the vehicle. Then you have your two standard size cup holders that uh, look good. And then you have the center armrest, which is really nice and softly padded, more of that nice stitching. And anyway, you open that up and then you'll see a little bit of a smaller cubby in there. But again, I can forgive it because you have this massive space underneath the uh, center here. So uh, that still is a good space though here in the center armrest and uh, you know, plenty of room to fit, you know, sunglasses, anything like that fits with ease. And so overall, I think all things considered, it's a really good amount of storage space here in the RDX. Backseat space in the RDX is also very well done. So you sit up a little bit higher there in those seats. That's one thing I've noticed. Um, and they're a little bit firmer, much like the front seats, you know, not quite as soft or plush as I would personally like, um, but still very comfortable seats nonetheless. Anyway, they're very roomy as well. I'm five foot nine, me sitting behind myself. I easily have, I don't know, about five inches of legroom to spare there, I think. Plenty, plenty of legroom. Also plenty of headroom room as well and so I don't think anyone's gonna be cramped in that back seat I mean it is it's really the interior space here in the RDX when they you know with this new version they've made it a little bit bigger and because of that by the numbers I, I usually don't quote all the numbers here you know whenever I talk about the interior on these vehicles but I will say that this one is ahead of all of its German competitors as far as interior space you have more leg room you have more rear cargo room more elbow room more shoulder room all anything you can think of is sp more spacious in here than it is in any of the uh, you know European rivals here for this vehicle and so it means that it just it's very nice and spacious you also when you look forward will see two air vents as well as two charging USB ports back there you also see a fold down center armrest with two cup holders built into it and there's also bottle holders in the doors cargo space in the RDX is also just massive for a vehicle of this class again it's ahead of all of its European competition as far as having a way more space back there and it's a lot of really good usable spaces too in addition to just having a nice you know, long, wide, flat load floor there. You can also fold down the rear seats if you want even more space there lengthwise. Um, but then you have a nice pocket there on the left-hand side. And then you can also lift up the floor and then you'll see a very deep cubby. You can fit, you know, grocery bags, anything like that fits in there with ease. And then you can even flip it back up and you'll see another even deeper bin there on the left-hand side. And again, very massive. You could easily fit like a gallon of milk or something in there. And then on the right-hand side, you'll see all your, you know, tire stuff for mobility kit or whatever and so overall I mean you know there's tons of space under the floor alone and then to have all the additional space on top um, I mean it's it, you can fit so much stuff in this rear area here it's really impressive and of course it has a power closed tailgate as well and so overall a very very usable space all right so start I'm gonna go for a drive the RDX here has a newer Acura key has a really nice weight to it it's very substantial has some metal buttons here on the back and a little bit smaller than uh, previous Acura keys as well which is also welcome so of course it's keyless access keyless entry and push button start so you just leave the key in your pocket hit the metal engine start button and it starts right up all right so setting off in the 2019 Acura RDX so uh, the first thing you notice here is that it's really nice and quiet and refined here in the new RDX. So they went to great lengths to make it a little more refined. Um, and so it's got thicker carpeting. They even have front laminated glass here um, to help kind of cancel out some of that noise. They also have triple seals around the doors. So a lot of that goes a long way into just making it a lot more refined than the previous RDX. Other things to note here, visibility is pretty good in the RDX. You have a hood that drops down pretty Pretty nicely you do see the creases of the hood here which I actually personally like I think it's exciting um, also you have uh, these a pillars that are a little thicker because you have the blind spot monitoring uh, little icon here in the little corner and I wish they could just kind of had a window there instead and had that in the mirror like most companies do and then view out of the back is also pretty good you know just like most SUVs with a nice large rear window there and so overall pretty easy to drive in that regard 
Another thing that makes this very easy to drive is just how direct the throttle response is. I mean, it is immediate. For a turbocharged vehicle, um, I mean, it, it really, as soon as you give it a, just a tiny movement of the gas pedal, it immediately starts moving. Uh, and so it's very uh, sensitive, but I really love it. It makes it so much more responsive and less lazy feeling than a lot of the other uh, vehicles out there. And just cruising now on a main road, uh, you can again hear how nice and quiet it is in here, even with cars passing by. You hardly hear them. It is just so refined in here. I'm really impressed with that. It's also a pretty nice smooth ride. You have a little bit of a sportier suspension setup here in the A-Spec version, but you know, at least on well taken care of roads like this here, uh, you know, it feels really nice. But we'll continue to judge that here as we go around some corners and stuff. All right, so we're gonna put it up into the Sport Plus mode for the dynamic mode, put the transmission into its Sport mode, and let's turn down onto this back road here and see how it does. Do like a slight rolling start. Here we go. <laughs> a little bit of a delay, and then it takes off. Ooh, and then it, it pulls pretty well. So, so the RDX A-Spec here runs the two liter turbocharged four cylinder engine, very similar to like the, uh, you know, the Accord and it's two liter turbo, a detuned version of the Civic Type R motor. And uh, it has VTEC as well. So get that extra little bit of a rip to it and uh, feels pretty good and so it runs it has 272 horsepower 280 pound-feet of torque and it'll do 0 to 60 in 6.6 .6 seconds is what they claim and that sounds a little conservative um, you know I feel like it's a little quicker at least like low sixes is I think what I would say um, but it's punchy and whenever you have this transmission in sport mode I mean it's hanging out at 4,000 rpms just wanting to play along with me here, which is great. This runs the 10-speed automatic transmission, so there's plenty of gears to play with to give you the best uh, power possible. And uh, so that 10-speed is, again, similar to the one you see in the new Honda Accord and stuff like that. And uh, it's pretty responsive. It's always felt really, uh, you know, eager to give me a downshift and, you know, seems to be very well-tuned, especially here in the sport mode, to uh, just play along and help you have a sporty driving experience. Another thing that I'm noticing about this 10-speed automatic is that it's always like in boost it always is in the right gear I'm never really waiting around for it ever where it's always you know sometimes I got to do one downshift but that's it I mean it always feels like I've I'm just riding a wave of torque constantly and so it really does a good job of you know even in you know, the normal sport mode which is the normal drive mode here it's amazing how it's always ready at my every time I tap on the gas I immediately get response and torque and it's great the engine also sounds really good too it's, it's a very muscular sound to it. Now, I believe I did read that it is piped in a little bit, so there's some help there that's a little artificial, but it's, it's it does a really good job. And it's, it's rev matching the downshifts automatically just in sport mode here, which is very cool as well. But speaking of uh, doing the, the downshifts and stuff, let's do manual mode here with these paddle shifters. And uh, see, it keeps wanting to put me into second, even with manual mode. So let's see if we can do a real first gear start quickly. Nope, keeps forcing me into second. But once you use these paddle shifters, they are very, very responsive. So that's good. I just, it's a little annoying. It wouldn't actually hold the gear I wanted it to hold. And so and then you can just hold the paddle uh, and it'll automatically go back to automatic. So we'll put it in automatic as we go around these corners here, see how it handles. So <laughs> this transmission really wants to play around. Uh, it handles really well though. I gotta say this is nice and flat. And the roads aren't perfect. We got a little bit of salt on them, a little bit of moisture as well. And it's not super warm, but not too cold either, around 40 degrees here. But wow, it's really, it handles so well. It turns in really well. That's, I think, the thing that I'm really noticing the most. Man, this thing, it just wants to hang out at 5,000 RPM. It's hilarious. Anyway, it turns in so quickly. Um, and the steering, again, has a little bit of an extra heft to it here in this Sport Plus mode, but it just wants to tear up this back road. And just like that, we have caught up to traffic. This thing is a corner car where I'm impressed with the RDX. <laughs> it's impressive and I can also tell so this has that true torque vectoring all-wheel drive system, super handling all-wheel drive that Acura is kind of famous for here and it does an excellent job. I can feel it in a few of those corners back there. Really, um, you know, it can put up to 100% of the torque to one wheel to help give you the maximum amount of, you know, exit to really give you the, the power in the right, the right placing. And so, 
really makes this feel very, very dynamic, even more dynamic than it should. Although this is really reasonably weighted as well. So it's uh, in line with some of the competition, a little bit lighter than some of them. This is like 100 pounds lighter than like a BMW X3, for example. Um, and so it actually only weighs right at 4,000 pounds. It's like 4,019 pounds or something like that. And so it doesn't feel very heavy. It doesn't also, it feels, you know, you are sitting up pretty high, obviously you're in an SUV and it's a fairly large SUV, um, but it doesn't feel that way. It kind of shrinks around you and it's just ready to just carve up the road in front of you uh, very precisely. That's kind of what I keep, with the word that I keep, you know, thinking is precision. It's very precise in every way. The throw response is very precise. The steering is very precise. Even the brakes, I haven't mentioned those yet. They are also very responsive. And then once you start dipping into the brake pedal there, it is again, very sensitive to your to your touch once you are on them and so overall it's uh, everything is very responsive very dialed in fine-tuned and precise and uh, just really enjoyable no acceleration leave it in automatic mode <laughs> yeah this thing is <laughs> it is quick uh, I'm, I'm having a great time driving this <laughs> You gotta test drive one of these things if you doubt its handling capabilities because um, these, it's amazing how just SUVs in general have come so far, um, but especially the Acura SUVs. I was blown away in the MDX, you know, for a three row crossover, how well that handled just blew me away and set the benchmark in my mind as far as best handling three row crossover. And this, I think, sets the benchmark for best handling two row crossover, at least in the luxury segment as far as non-performance stuff goes. You know, in order to get, you know, better handling out of any of its competitors, you gotta go up to their actual performance versions. This is just so precise. <laughs> I just wanna push it more and more. Like, it's, it really, I haven't found a limit. There isn't really much of a limit. I mean, the, the tires are doing a pretty good job gripping here, even with, you know, the not ideal conditions. Uh, you got these 255 wide Goodyears that are really just doing a great job gripping. And again, when I can kind of feel like it wants to understeer, then I feel the back end helping out with that torque vectoring all-wheel drive and kind of, uh, you know, guiding me through the corner. And so I feel that that going on. And it's really cool just how you can kind of, you really feel it working. It truly makes a difference. Whereas all the competitors have a normal all-wheel drive system. Aside from Volvo, they have a torque vectoring one as well. But it doesn't work nearly as effectively as this does. Uh, this is just so, I mean, it makes this feel so dynamic. I feel like it's even like wanting to kick out the back end on me here. I'm just having a blast with this thing. <laughs> oh. Yeah, so this, this should tell you all you need to know about the handling of the RDX. It is uh, definitely the new benchmark. And it's also kind of a little bit better off performance wise than all the competitors as well. You know, the normal stuff, again, out there from the European competitors, it's got a little more power, you know, like 20 odd more horsepower. Torque's right in line with most of those others, maybe a little bit more than some. Um, but it's just, <laughs> none of them handle as much, as much fun as this does. And honestly, I think some of the even performance ones didn't feel quite as dynamic as this does. This just has a lighter, more precise and just tossable feeling to it that is really mind-blowing. You have the SUV functionality, yet you have fantastic handling that makes me just crack up. It is hilarious fun. So anyway, um, yeah, that's about it as far as everything I can glean here from my first few minutes of driving the RDX. Uh, but I'm actually gonna be taking this on a road trip here uh, for about 650 miles this weekend. And so uh, you've already seen how well this handles, but I wanna you know, also talk about how it will you know, handle a road trip and just cruising and relaxed kind of driving and see if it does that just as well. So, and I'll also come back and give you guys my final fuel economy and also my thoughts on the pricing. All right, so I've been driving the RDX here for a week now, and I've put over 700 miles on it, actually, about 80 miles uh, around town, and then uh, about 650 on the highway. Um, and so I did a road trip to Maryland and back, and uh, this is a really great road trip vehicle. Um, you know, like the seats I mentioned earlier are a little firmer, but they actually were really totally comfortable. I had no complaints on the drive. Um, and this vehicle is just 
it's still such a fun and engaging vehicle to drive. The engine is so willing and it's just it's just very sporty, but even just from a non-sporty standpoint, it just does everything you want it to do immediately and so well. Uh, it's really satisfying. And so anyway, uh, during my time of driving here, one of the things I uh, obviously recorded was my fuel economy. So before my road trip there of about 80 miles, uh, my average was 17.8 mpg. These are rated at 21 in the city, so that's about three lower than what you uh, you know should be getting. But we are in the winter time, so you know winter blends of fuel and you know longer idling periods things like that um, you know warming up the engine and stuff uh, so I can kind of cut a little bit of a break that's not you know super far off and the highway MPG was even closer over my you know like 650 mile road trip here um, I ended up getting 23.8 MPG so almost 24 and these are rated to 26 so uh, again a totally reasonable number I think uh, you know for a larger SUV I mean the, you know this is still in the uh, smaller class of SUV but you know, in reality these are still pretty large vehicles these days you know a little bit blockier than a sedan or something so you're not going to get as good a fuel economy as like an Accord or you know an Acura like TLX or something like that but still very very efficient with this 10-speed auto and the 2-liter turbo motor as long as you keep your foot out of the gas pedal you know if you want to go into that boost that's when you start to see the fuel economy drop a couple other things I noticed during my time of road tripping here in the RDX um, is the Apple CarPlay integration which I use you know to run Waze the whole time on my trip and um, I noticed that so I really still like this true touchpad interface system I think it works very well whenever you're in Acura's own system whenever you go into CarPlay it basically basically acts like the Lexus touchpad and other touchpads out there where you have to still drag your finger around with the cursor and that's just simply because with CarPlay for example on Waze there are you know I don't know six or seven different little icons you can click on versus you know the Acura system nicely simplifies everything within its menus so you have nice large red highlights over everything and it's a very simplified very uh, larger icon setup and so you can just use this touchpad and kind of guess where your finger should be um, to touch what you want to touch and you don't have to slide your finger around like it's a mouse pad um, and I appreciate that so it is good but then with the CarPlay it still is a little uh, counterintuitive and then you have to retrain your brain to be like okay now I have to treat this like an older touchpad and slide around my finger in order to uh, you know try and click on what I want to click on and it is even tricky I mean after spending you know about 10 hours in the vehicle you know uh, you know responding to Waze alerts and things like that it still isn't quite as intuitive as a touchscreen and so you know with everything going touch these days everyone's phones are touch you know it's this is a good system again if you just stick to um, the you know ac actual accurate setup but otherwise if you're going to be using CarPlay a lot this would not be my first pick for CarPlay I'd pick a, a vehicle that has a normal touch screen um, and you know although the screen is mounted higher and Acura says you know it helps keep your eyes on the road better um, in reality with how high a lot of these touch screens are coming up these days you know they just look like tablets stuck onto the dashboard which from an aesthetic standpoint might not be the greatest but it does make it so that you know you still are looking fairly high up and you're not like peering down into your transmission tunnel in order to touch a touchscreen anymore. So I really think that point's kind of moot and I think that a touchscreen still would just work better. Another thing that I did get to enjoy during my road tripping time here though was this ELS uh, 3D surround sound system which sounds really, really good. Uh, Acura even included an iPod with uncompressed music to fully experience what this system can do and um, it is very crisp, very clear. It doesn't have quite as much base as like some of the highest top end systems out there um, there are some that just you know have it out powered and have way more speakers and so for those uh, you know it's uh, you know going to lose out a little bit but compared to everything else in this class of SUV there's you know there are some premium audio options offered none of them have the speakers in the ceiling I don't think uh, you know for a true surround sound experience um, and I think some of them might you know have as much bass and stuff but I don't think they have as much of a clarity to the vocals and stuff and it really is a powerful stereo and the last thing I wanted to comment on for my road trip here is the adaptive cruise control so um, it's a pretty great system for the most part uh, but I have noticed that this one's a little more conservative than some other systems that I've used in the past with other vehicles and, and other manufacturers and so this one no matter what unless you're going at really so, slow speeds it almost always wants to keep like a two car length distance even on its closest distance setting for the adaptive cruise 
use. Um, and so whenever you're in really heavier traffic or even if you're going at a higher speed but you're in a congested area um, where there's lots of cars around you, you know, it does offer a plenty of opportunities for people to cut in front of you, people behind you to wonder why you're lagging behind so much and all that kind of stuff. You know, so for the stop and go stuff, it is very handy still. You know, these are great systems that help you inch up in traffic without, you know, having you do the whole thing all on your own. Um, but, uh, you know, whenever it's some of the, the more intense situations, I wish this one was a little more, um, I guess, aggressive in its driving. Uh, but again, I, I guess they want to err on the side of caution. I totally understand that. I just think there's some others that seem to be equally as safe uh, while still allowing you to be a little bit closer or just be a little more responsive at, you know, getting back on the gas whenever a car moves out of the way. And this one just has a few seconds delay and then it's like, okay, the car is completely out of the field of view. Time to finally hit the gas and get on it and so um, not the sharpest of adaptive cruise systems I think but still very nice and also it's great that it is standard um, that's really the, the uh, standout thing is it's a standard feature here in the RDX uh, while many of the others make you pay thousands extra for the highest top trim levels or you know advanced packages that are very expensive several thousand dollars in order to get the adaptive cruise and the, some of the other safety features that this has um, and it does a really great job you know the blind spot monitoring all that kind of stuff standard again stuff you usually have to pay extra for in all of the European competition you get more room for the money you get uh, you know more features for the money and it's also just very competitively priced so that again even as it sits it's still a couple thousand less than all of its competitors some it's several thousand less and then once you try and get adaptive cruise on those in some cases it's several several thousands of dollars more for the European competition I think one example is even over ten thousand dollars more expensive I believe for the Q5 if you want all the equipment you get on this and so, uh, you know, that's where the RDX is really a watertight proposition and just a very solid value. Speaking of value, uh, this one is $46,995 as tested. Um, and so 47 basically, and there aren't really any options for these. So that's basically what you're paying if you want an A-spec is uh, $47,000. Whenever you consider everything, I still think the RDX is probably my favorite in this segment. Um, and just an absolute uh, blast to drive, an absolute awesome value. And and um, like I said, I just can't really praise it enough. I think it's fantastic. And clearly with its high sales, um, it seems to be something that everyone else is noticing as well. So anyway, let me know your thoughts on the RDX in the comments below. Thank you guys very much for watching. I'll see you on the next one. Take care.